All right, so we're ready to launch into Crevasse Rescue. Um, this video isn't really gonna show what Rescuer 1, 2, and 3 do explicitly. It's more about uh, demonstrating the uh, mechanics of the system. So I'm gonna throw my helmet on and we'll get started. All right, so first, of course, I need to get clipped into my system here. There we go. And then I've got my fallen climber down there. So my fallen climber has fallen. Myself and my teammates have dropped into self-arrest and we've stopped their fall. So then the rest of my team is gonna take um, and I'm gonna build an anchor. So I dig my T-slot here and put my uh, put my picket down in it. And then this prusik here that is on the rope is gonna come off my harness. I'm using the same carabiner, which is free efficiency, clipping it to my anchor. And then I'm gonna slide this as far down as I can so that the weight of my fallen climber is on my prusik instead of on me. Now, so I've got a prusik hitch in. Now I'm gonna tell the rest of my team to put a, give me a little bit of slack so we can weight the anchor and give me some slack to put a clove hitch in because a prusik alone is not safe. We wanna back it up with something. So I'm going to back it up with a clove hitch into this big carabiner here and lock it. Okay. So now my fallen climber down there is safe. They're on a prusik hitch backed up to a clove hitch, both on lockers and the rest of my team can come down and join me. While the rest of my team is coming down to join me, I need to escape this system. I cannot simply untie, then I would not be safe. So I'm going to grab another long piece of cord and tie a new prusik. I'm gonna do that down here below the anchor prusik. This will allow for some movement. Oh, that got kind of messy, that's okay. tie that off now in one fell swoop here. I'm going to remove my figure eight, put in my prusik and lock it. And then I need to take this knot out. Uh, for now, for the sake of clarity, I'm gonna dress this clove hitch so that everything can be seen a little easier. It's okay if you don't, it just makes things nicer, uh, look nicer if you do. Okay, so here's the anchor. I'm gonna go ahead and come out so that way I can move around for the sake of this video, but otherwise this rescuer would stay clipped in the whole time. <clears throat> so here's my anchor, right? Running down my fallen climber is hanging on this, on this prusik backed up to this clove. So if I come down here and give this a tug, we can see that my clove hitch, my prusik hitch is holding backed up by that clove up there at the anchor. Okay. So this is what we call the anchor line. It's a lifeline to our fallen climber. Now we're going to create, we're going to do two things. We're going to create what we call a rescue loop, which is a loop of rope coming from the clove hitch to a figure eight on a bite. And clipped into the anchor. So now the other team members would be attached to their prusiks inside of this rescue loop. I'm going to extend that down here. So that's the rescue loop. 
That's what keeps the other climbers safe. While they were coming down, they were undoing their own figure eights and coming down on their Prusix. Uh, so we have all of this rope here to work with to rescue our fallen climber. So we're gonna create a whole separate system. So what we've done now is we've created an anchor line that keeps our fallen climber safe, what we call a rescue loop to keep our <coughs> uh, rescuers safe, and now we're gonna create a two to one system that we can use to haul up our fallen climber that does not utilize the anchor rope at all. Uh, the advantage to this is the added safety. We don't know what's happened to that anchor line. Uh, maybe it's been damaged or something else. And if we put too much pressure on it, too much weight on it, it, uh, it could fail. Um, and so this is just sort of a way to do it that uh, has a large margin for safety. So what I've done here is I've undone this Mountaineer's coil. I've managed to get my rope fairly twisted in the process. But okay, great. So undone the Mountaineer's coil. Quick figure eight on a bite here at the very end. No one's life is on this right now. So this is just the very end. It can go on a non-locking carabiner into my anchor. It's just there so we don't lose it. So now with all this rope, let's haul our fallen climber out. So from here, I'm gonna take my pulley. This is gonna put someone's life on it, so it needs to be a locking carabiner. And I'm gonna run this pulley. I'd go to the edge of the crevasse, but you know, there's no real crevasse. So this is gonna get clipped onto the fallen climber's harness and locked. And now we have three lines here. I'm gonna move our rescue loop out of the way. Right. So if we look down here, we've got three, three lines going down here. We've got this one, which is connected to our Prusik there, leading to our fallen climber. That's our anchor line. We've got this one leading from our rescue loop down to the pulley. That's what's called our load line. It's going to take the load of the fallen climber. And then we have this one coming from the fallen climber's pulley up to the rescuers here. This is called the haul line name so because we're going to haul on it. So now, as I pull on this rope, my fallen climber comes up. Now there's no ratchet system or anything. The safety margin here is that we've got two to three people pulling on this line. All right, and it works. I was able to just pull my fallen climber up out of the crevasse. <clears throat> Uh, now let's say we need a little bit more mechanical advantage, so I'm going to slide my fallen climber further back down here. There we go, that's as far as he goes. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create more mechanical advantage. So I have built a two to one system down there on my fallen climber. And now I'm going to build a three to one system on top of it. So I need to do a couple things. First, I need to create an extension from my rescue loop to serve as another anchor point. So that's just going to be right here. Now to this gets clipped two things. A short Prusik. Short which I'm gonna make even shorter here in a moment, and a pulley, which I sent my pulley down there. So I'm gonna use instead, a tube style belay device can work in place of a pulley. I'm actually just gonna go grab my pulley um, so that we can use it for the sake of this example. If you only have one pulley in the group, this is where it goes. It goes down here on the fallen climber. There we go. Just for the sake of right now as example, I, I want it up here. So now uh, we've got a short Prusik on there and I've got a pulley on here and they are on separate carabiners. Okay. So 
here's how this is gonna work. I'm gonna create a three to one system on top of this two to one that I've already made. So we call this a Z pulley because I've made a Z with my rope. So what needs to happen is right here, I need to clip this pulley on. That's just a redirect. There's nobody's life dangling off it, so it can be a non-locker. And then I need to put a prusik on, on the haul line, below my pulley. This is going to serve as a ratchet system, a progress capture system. That way when I pull up, the force of gravity acting on the fallen climber can be captured rather than my fallen climber pulling back down or falling back down, excuse me. And I want this to be like pretty short. So I'm gonna shorten that up. We want it to be basically right up near that pulley the entire time. All right, there we go. So this pulley will keep the prusik, this specific type of pulley will keep the prusik from jamming up inside of it. Uh, and then it'll, when it comes back down, this prusik will set and capture any progress I've made there. Now, a little bit further down on our haul line, we need to attach another redirect. We need to make this go the other direction. If you have another pulley, great, use it. If you don't, that's okay. A carabiner will work just fine. So I'm going to put a prusik hitch on the rope right here. Still on the haul line. Both of these prusiks have been attached on the haul line. I'm just gonna tie this with a quick overhand. And I'm just gonna put a carabiner on that. And that carabiner's only job is to serve as a redirect. So now I've created a Z using the haul line from what we call our C, our two to one system. So what we've done is I've built a three to one system on top of a two to one system, creating a six to one mechanical advantage. So as I pull on my haul line here, pull, 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 pull. We can see the rope is running through the prusik, through the pulley, up to this redirect, and I can only go to there. And then gravity would take back over, my fallen climber would fall down a little bit. This prusik captures that progress. And now we need to stretch this back out. So one of the rescuers, the rescuer number one, who is free to move up and down the anchor line, can just stretch that back out. And now we can repeat this process. As a six to one system, means we have to pull six feet of of rope through for every foot of progress I'm making down there. But it works. And it's really, really easy to apply that much mechanical advantage and pull someone out. It also took quite a bit of hardware and quite a bit of time to set up. So you wanna start with that C pulley and, and figure out, hey, will this C pulley really work for me? Can we get them out with just that? And if the answer is no, then proceed, proceed to this Z pulley. All right, so I'm gonna stretch it all back out again so we can kind of see everything that's going on in here. There we go. So I have my anchor line. This is going down to my fallen climber. We can take up the slack on that since we've pulled them in a little bit. There we go. So it is this prusik hitch backed up by this clove hitch that are keeping the fallen climber safe. Then we made a two to one pulley system by sending a pulley down to our fallen climber that's this, the load line, and this, the haul line. Then in order to gain more mechanical advantage, we built a three to one system, which is one, two redirects on that haul line. Um, so we're gonna practice this in 
uh, over and over and over again in a number of different settings. And we're going to start just by doing the two to one system, run through that a bunch, and then build on that three to one system on top of it and run through that a bunch. So there we have it. That is the crevasse rescue system that we use. Um, if you have any questions, of course, feel free to reach out. Thank you very much.